Hello, welcome to Crit Couch. I am Michael. Beep, 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 Skyler, um, with a little stuffed ram that is dancing over here, and we are playing the Legend of Zelda. That's not the Master Sword. No, no, that's not even a sword that's really in the game. Was it was the Master's? Wait, <laughs> hang on. Okay, so many years ago, Prince Darkness Ganon stole one of the Triforce with power. Princess Zelda had one of the Triforce with wisdom. She divided what? it into eight units to hide it from Ganon before she was captured. Go find the eight units link to save her. That's what we got. What? 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 Something was off. The Is it just going to show you every... Yep, all rupee. the items. <laughs> rupee. It's supposed to be rupee, but they actually changed the spelling later to match, like, the Indian currency. Wait, so is so the Master Sword wasn't in this game? No, no, the Master Sword didn't show up until the Super Nintendo. Okay. Um... So, um, yeah, we get this nice little roll with all the items. Uh, so, man, what a game to, to kind of like. Well, the magical get into key here. is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> he's so he's happy. a little guy. I open doors. And, of course, please look <laughs> up the manual for more details. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for the manual. Okay. Um, so, we've got a blank file selection here. So,. Okay, Legend of Zelda, obviously, like, the, the starter game for the series. Um, I mean, there's there's so much out there about this now, but there, it's such an interesting piece, especially in, like, the wake of Breath of the Wild and now with Elden Ring out there, you know, kind of like the way those two games have sort of reimagined for a lot of people what open world should look like. So kind of coming back to the source here is... I don't know. This was the first game that really like got me into gaming, and I'm sure this is true with like a lot of people. Like, I mean, I played games before this, but this one like really struck home. Like, I've got a lot of memories with this one. Um, Skyler's never played it, so first game I ever played was this is riveting. What was the first <laughs> game I ever played? It would have been on the Super Nintendo. It was you could turn into a werewolf. Uh, it was like a side-scrolling beat em up, and you could turn into a werewolf. That's what I remember. That also might be a fever dream. <laughs> there was a Nintendo game like that, but um, start with an O. O. Okay. Um. Uh. Boop, 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 boop. Oop. R. Y okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is there a Oprah? What Oprah? It's a zero. That that's oh. how many times Oprah has died. <laughs> so it's, oh god. <laughs> okay, so first of all, like classic intro screen. You know what? One of the things that um, I've, I've seen this. You've seen what? Oh, I've just I like I have seen this gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I mean, at this point, it's it's kind of classic. But you know, I always used to use this opening screen as like people always talk about level 1-1 one, one of Mario, right? And, like, uh, because 1-1 one, one is very much designed to kind of guide and teach people in Mario, like, how to get around. But I always liked this screen as well because there's so many little things that teach you kind of what you're looking at and draw your eye. I mean, it's, it's so simple by, like, today's standards. But, I mean, you can pretty easily put together, like, what's going on, like, like, what do you think's that? Like in the upper left corner, right? Like, what do you just assume that is? Maybe you don't know. Oh, oh, <laughs> I wasn't ready for quiz time. Are you talking about like the map, or are you talking about the black? Well, you block already called. Yeah, you already called it a map. Yeah, okay. so you just kind of assume that that's a map, which like tells you a lot about your location. You're kind of in the middle of the world. You've got these three avenues to go off the screen, and then like there's this like you know cave that's just sitting there calling to you and. Oh, that's what... Okay. It's this guy! <laughs> yeah. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Doo -doo -doo. So, interestingly... Um, Ooh, his face got kind of weird there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can just shoot swords? Yeah, when you've got uh, full health, you can... Oh. Okay, so that's something that... Okay, anyways. Just interesting to see the first and then know like what comes later. Yeah, and actually, um, originally... Uh, I believe in one of the early design iterations, Link just started with a sword. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, part of the kind of like idea behind this whole game, like there's a whole bunch of stuff from Miyamoto 
talking about like taking inspiration from his childhood, kind of wandering through the wilderness, like as a exploring kid. And, caves. Yeah, exploring yeah. caves, um, building like little slingshots and stuff out of stuff that he found. Did, did an old man give him a sword? <laughs> Is he actually the king of Britain? <laughs> yes. The, the man from Japan in the 80s is actually King Arthur. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Well, I always love every now and then you get a little story about like a young lady or something finding in one of the like the pit bog, peat bogs, what are they called? I don't remember now. Oh, yeah. But yeah. they'll just find a sword and it's like, oh, I'm, I, you know, <laughs> it's, I it's submit just... to the rightful ruler. <laughs> <laughs> no, no wonder these were their legends. Uh, but so, um, the idea like behind that cave was, and I'm just going to kind of wander around killing things, kind of giving a little bit of a gameplay visual here, talking about that, but um, was kind of like an incentivizing element for exploration, right? Like if you start with a sword, you just start going, but if you have nothing and can't do anything and you walk onto one of these other surrounding screens, all of which have enemies that come at you, you have no way of actually engaging them, so you either have to dodge or... I mean, there is a lot of visual weight to that cave on this screen, right? Like, it's this big yeah, it's black box. Nebulous. Yeah, so, you know, maybe you come back here and investigate. And, and it is true, you don't have to go in there. There are no sword runs of this, because up until the very final boss, <laughs> you don't have to are. have a sword. Hey, uh, real quick, face the camera? Yeah. Is Why is he like a little Mormon guy with a Bible? I mean, it's a shield with a cross on it. But uh, That tracks now. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you get what I'm saying. Would you, would you like? <laughs> Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord, our Lord and Savior, Savior? <laughs> or your car's extended warranty? <laughs> Old man in the cave. Um. So, uh, so yeah, like that. That whole kind of first screen is a very interesting uh, area here. Now, I want to kind of pose. And you know, we're about seven minutes in, and we haven't played a whole lot. I want to pose a question to you. Would you like to go through things uh, a little bit out of order? A lot of bit out of order? Actually, a lot of it out of order doesn't really exist as much in this game, practically. But, uh, or uh, do you just kind of want to go through things as you as you would normally do, like levels one through eight, not going out of the way? Like, do you have any kind of preferences? Like, my, my, no, yeah, I mean, just fuck me up, Daddy. Let's do something different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so one of the interesting things about this game, let's kind of like Whoa. view the world here because there's a lot of stuff that goes on um, in this world. Um, they did something with the oh, you just took, yeah, that, that was, was a fairy, a fairy right? Yeah, that was okay. a fairy. If you walk down and like pause every now and then, it it actually like keeps track of where your feet were. Yeah, so it's that was actually little continuity thing. So technologically, one of the interesting things about this it's game, little... uh, they're tektites. Yeah, um, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. But um, one of the interesting things about technologically this game is the scrolling. So. Uh, that clock freezes everything on the screen, so you basically just kind of get free reign to kill stuff if a clock mm. drops. So the screen doesn't, like, hard cut, right? Like, you don't fade to black and then fade in. It actually scrolls with you, which is sort of like a delayed version of, say, the way the Mario scrolling works, which is always continuous. But then when you go from, like, level 1 to level 2 or whatever, it does actually just straight up cut to those those next stages and that's something that was invented or at least at least Nintendo invented when building this game and it actually contributes to the sense of continuity in this world um, while also kind of making each screen discreet like it's everything on a screen will only exist on that screen right like a moblin from south of us won't so wander up moblins. north here. Yeah, those were the original it, moblins. It was interesting because there was like the, the like orange little guys and then there was almost like the teal ones. Mm -hmm. And it's so fascinating to me that they've kept that color palette for so long for some yeah. of those creatures. Yeah, Zelda has pretty much always gone with like red or orange for like the lesser version. And uh, generally speaking, there, there are some breaches, but then like the blue and the darker ones uh, tend to be the harder, harder versions. Um... So like lots of like visualizations, um, like these guys, uh, these are actually enemies. Sure. If you touch them. <laughs> and some of them well, just come he, for you hardcore. He is, he is ready to rock. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, as you can also see, like we're able to wander just kind of wherever and. So this is why people were saying Breath of the Wild was so much like the original Zelda. Yeah. 
Because um, you could just just go. Yeah, and for the most part, you can. So you actually can get to almost everywhere on the map on foot. And yes, you can hear we're down to one heart, so it's beeping at us. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's I apologize. what the terrible sound is. Yeah. Um, one of the interesting things, and I'll show this here in a second. There's two places in this game where they used this scrolling. Uh, to an effect that we do see in modern games. Um, Who left all these snails here? <laughs> they're, well, yeah, they're boulders, but yeah, I always thought they looked kind of like weird little animals like you were talking about. Um, but that scrolling enables them to do stuff like th this, where these are the lost hills. So if I just keep moving down, it keeps scrolling me to the same screen over and over again. And we do see that in modern games where you get into kind of like mysterious places that yeah that'll like re like you're always kind of resetting the world around you because so you don't move on the map either yeah now there is a trick to this one um there's also the lost woods which also originated in this game uh, oh, okay. if we kind of move to the left here that's that there is one way out so if we move to the left we get out but you know we can come up here here's a, a lionel so these are the big like nasty big lion dudes from breath of the wild that um you know you can spend a lot of time trying to kill um <laughs> trying to kill yeah, yeah. <laughs> master using it and you can have it what does that mean it means so i you just already have a new sword nope oh see whatever master using it means we have to figure that out um oh, okay uh technically what that means is we have to have enough heart containers to be able to pick it up uh, and in this case we have to have five heart containers to pick it up that is indicated nowhere in the game <laughs> okay you died I did. Um, Oprah, no! <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and continue. Dying doesn't really have any effect. Um, we just start back at the beginning. So that was also kind of another interesting thing about... Do you lose anything? Or? Uh, not in this game, I don't believe. Um, you just you come back to the beginning, or if you're in a dungeon, you go to the beginning of the dungeon with only three hearts. Um, it's actually not a bad shortcut if you're kind of out of your depth. But, you know, we've already been kind of along most of the eastern part of the map. Um, we can kind of come back this way and see the western part. We've seen a number of different enemies. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, like, movement and design decisions around the enemies. Uh, but, yeah, you know, you, you mentioned the whole Breath of the Wild thing where it's like... Uh, <laughs> I'm just taking rocks right up the ass. Uh, ooh, a bomb. So, yeah, you can just explore. Um, and, in fact, like, there's a lot of interesting design discussion around... Um, Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so these fairy, uh, these fairy ponds, they'll just heal you up. So there's a lot of design discussion around, like, the exploration thing. And I, I think what's interesting about playing this now, kind of, like, especially alongside things like Elden Ring getting so popular... Um, with the open world exploration is it's like right. we're recording in 2022 yeah, again baby it <laughs> um there's we're different people <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot of design stuff that like in certain circumstances you might say like okay well that seems like bad design like just randomly hitting stuff and finding secrets um and that's what a lot of this game is like there are things that are just arbitrarily hidden in places that force you to do weird stuff. Those games were like 10 years later, people are still finding stuff. Yeah, and I mean, so here's the Lost Woods. I'm going to die again because I'm just kind of talking and showing things off. Um, if you know the right sequence of directions, you can move through this, but otherwise you just stay on this cross screen. Mm. Um, A lot of cross motifs. <laughs> are you sure he's not more? Well, there's only four directions, so. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, you but, kept your bomb, huh? Yeah, like is I said, a, you don't really lose anything. Is that an infinite bomb? No, you see I have the, the bomb icon with four next to it. I do now. Yeah. So getting bombs, that's actually, uh, being able to like get a bomb is kind of core to no sword runs. Um, there are a couple of things you can acquire. There's actually a lot you can acquire out in the overworld if you uh, if you know where to get it all. And that's kind of what I was asking, you know, you know how do we want to do this? Do we want to like break things a little bit? kind of get some stuff out of order and since you said yes let's uh let's 
as we kind of come to the close of this first episode, let's just go get that sword. Right? So I said we need five heart containers, right? Well, that mm -hmm. means we need to find two more. Uh, so fortunately, I know where they all are. Um, and I know which ones we can get. So for right now, that Zora that's spitting balls at me, um, yep. we can't block him until we buy the better shield. But right up here. Oh, yeah. You're kidding me. Okay. Yeah, that's... All right. This guy, oh my god, if... Take anyone you want. You The red potion just refills all your life and turns in, like, there's two types of potions, red and blue. Blue refills your health once, red you can use twice. After the first use, it turns into a blue potion. You, you can buy these. People used to pick that when this was a new game, not understanding, and, oh... You can so actually, I think you can actually cheat yourself out of being able to get the magical sword if you don't take any of the extra heart containers. Oh, no. Because I think you need 12 heart containers to get the magical sword, and there's eight levels. So you can get to 11 heart containers by beating all eight levels. Uh, so, yeah, you could potentially not get the best sword in the game. <laughs> Nothing like a three heart run. So, huh. <laughs> I, I just, I'm not quite sure how to feel about that because there's a, there's a part of me I like, you know, I, I love just like the experience and the mm -hmm. exploration and the just having to experiment and try and find things, um, even necessarily not worthwhile things, but like thinking about like, how so, many places so, there are you could bomb? Let me, because I, because I remember this from like the N sixty four era of, well, and even like the Game Boy era of like, um, you'd buy a game and it'd come with a manual and you'd read the manual, and sometimes right. it would tell you things that the game might not. Yeah. Um, did the manual for the? Do we have the manual for this? Or, uh, well, I have, I have one in one of my drawers somewhere. Yeah, yeah. but like, would it tell you anything about like bombing for hidden caves? It. Um, I'd have to check the manual, but I do... Oh, God. Okay. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm waiting for this Lionel to get out of the way, because these things have a lot of health. Um, so actually, that's something that I think we will save for our next episode, because... Um, so here we are at the White Sword. Uh, we have our five heart containers, so we can pick this up. Um, and next time on Crit Couch, we're going to have ourselves a new sword. So I hope y'all have fun coming along for this ride with us. Say goodbye to Mr. Rammy. I'll have to put a picture of the Ram up in here so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll take a picture of him right now. <laughs> See y'all next time. Yeah, with Mr. Rammy. <laughs> Is that the noise Rams make? I don't know. <laughs> like I've ever seen a Ram. Yeah. <laughs>